Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to this uh, video where we will do a little bit of work on how to present or how to prepare for a presentation. We have used this exercise uh, for several years now with uh, many, many uh, postgraduate students who join our programs here at IIT Bombay and uh, this is an opportunity for us to be able to share it with you and um, see if it might be useful for you. Okay? We actually set it up as a game and we call it a flight and the number of the flight is HS791X and uh, for anybody to be on this flight you have to have a ticket it's really otherwise it's a practice for presentations but we set it up as a flight and then everything that happens all the uh, training that happens all the conversations that happen happen around it with it as a flight like a ticket the validity of tickets on a flight so these are the requirements for you to have a valid flight ticket. So for example, one of the things we say is that students would have to review one journal paper in their own area of research. So we don't tell them what they should or what they shouldn't, but they can take one paper. For this particular set of videos, uh, there actually may be a selection of uh, five papers uh, from different areas uh, which you can choose from and then uh, do the preparation so that way uh, you, we can do peer review and we can also uh, share the same paper with other people. Once you have reviewed that paper, it might take you anywhere from two to three hours to review that journal paper and because it's from your research area, uh, the vocabulary is known to you and you don't have to do any more uh, additional investment of time and effort in terms of the subject matter, it's something which is of interest to you, something that you are familiar with. However, it is a journal paper by some other researchers across the world anywhere and your job is to review it. I will come back to this whole uh, purpose of review uh, in from a different context in a little bit as to why doing something like this would make a difference within your group or within a certain research community. So once you have reviewed this uh, journal paper, you are then asked to make five slides to communicate the essence of the paper. So it is five slides, five slides, not four, not six, five slides to communicate the essence of the paper. I usually tell the students that this is not an easy exercise, it's a very difficult exercise because to take a good journal paper and to present the essence of that in five slides is not easy. So the effort that is required so that you can do that well is actually the part of the exercise. So you prepare five slides and uh, you are expected then to present these five slides uh, to an audience. But then there is also a sixth slide which is over and above these five slides. And the sixth slide is actually a question that is posed as a quiz to the audience. Now, the way it works is that while you were presenting, you always had this question in the background that the audience should be able to answer after your five slides presentation is complete. So what that means is that if you have done a good job of presenting the five slides, then the audience should be able to answer that question. You got to be careful that the quiz question that you ask in the sixth slide is consistent with uh, two things. One is the material that you have covered and how you've covered it and also the level of the audience. So you want to just make sure that it honors uh, the intelligence of the audience. You cannot ask a trivial question like how many meters in a kilometer for example for which they didn't even need to really listen to your presentation. They knew it already before they came in to your auditorium. So you want to ask them a question in a way in which it honors the work that got done in the presentation of your five slides that they are actually left with an appreciation and an understanding of what you were covering from the journal paper and if they are successful in answering that question. We actually do this, we actually have a sheet of paper that we give out to the audience and then we take their uh, roll numbers and the departments and the names on the sheet of paper and also ask them to answer this question on the slide and then we compile all of them if it's a large class like 350 people class then we compile all these and then give it to the speaker so that the speaker would then know if most people could answer that 
intelligent question that was based on the five slides that you presented, then if they answered it successfully, then your presentation was successful. If they could not answer it successfully, then mm, maybe you really need to review your slides and you know you need to look at what worked, what did not work so that you can actually be successful next time. The next point we emphasize is um, that the presentation needs to be made in 5 minutes, oops sorry no not 5 minutes, 4 minutes 59 seconds. And uh, the reason I earlier used to say 5 minutes, but then now we have started saying 4 minutes 59 seconds because the moment you say 5 minutes people go with the resolution of plus minus 1 minute and say okay 4 minutes is okay and 6 minutes is okay, not really okay, 4 minutes 59 seconds. Now if they cannot do it in 4 minutes 59 seconds and most of the time students or whoever is preparing for this would fail at it, uh, it makes the ticket invalid. The point is not that you have a valid ticket or you did not have a valid ticket, the point is that you actually did the work to find out whether it takes 4 minutes 58 seconds or whether it takes 5 minutes to be able to get your presentation done. It is just an exercise in dealing with time. While uh, giving this lecture invariably I ask students to uh, let me know if they know how much is 1 minute and most of them look at me you know blank as to what am I talking about and I say okay why do not you all close your eyes and then we will start the one minute and when the one minute is over I will ask you to open your eyes and uh, they do that and it turns out they find out that one minute is actually a very long time. So uh, this is also done with the intention that in case somebody has finished four minutes and you just have one minute left. You can actually take a pause for 5 minutes, 10 seconds, 5 seconds or 10 seconds and uh, look to see what is it that you really need to say in the remaining 50 seconds. And then you take the time in those 50 seconds and say the essence of whatever needed to be said so that the communication is complete and you have been able to honor your 5 minutes time limit. The next step in the having a valid ticket is to actually be able to, uh, to bring that uh, PPT file on a pen drive a lot of people do not get the importance of this, uh, sometimes they will bring it as a PPTX file or they will bring it on not a pen drive on something else and invariably there is either some software problem or there is some hardware problem and one is not able to actually uh, give them a chance to make a presentation. And this happens, I mean you know out of 10 people who you know come up to present maybe sometimes 6, 7 of them do not have it in the form of PPT or do not have it on a pen drive and therefore they have an invalid ticket. This is also an exercise in following instructions and I will come to that in the next slide. And one of the things I point to while doing this lecture is that human beings are not designed to follow instructions, they just do whatever they think they should do and uh, what they need to know, they, they know, they have done in the past and they do that and I will give an example of that in the next slide too. And the last point I want to uh, say is uh, that as a part of uh, being ready for the presentation you got to have a certain dress code. Um, so I do not usually tell people what they should wear or what they should not wear, I really raise this point for them to be able to start getting engaged in this whole question of how they present themselves. So for example, if some place require that you wear a trouser and a shirt with a tie, then that is what you do. If some place you require that you wear a kurta pajama, then that is what you do. Uh, this is something that you would have to uh, consult with your uh, seniors, uh, consult with you know people who have been for conferences or gone, gone for presentations, gone for interviews and they will be the best people to be able to answer this question for you. So it is not so much uh, for you to be able to um, tell what is the right thing to do but for you to be appropriate to an occasion and I think it is an important aspect of the presentation. So you want to present yourself because the first thing that people are going to see is you and if you dress a particular way they will already have certain impressions, if you dress a different way then they will have different impressions. So you just want to be responsible for how you are perceived when you walk into the room. Okay. So that is as far as the ticket validity is concerned. One of the things I tell uh, students is that any part of the instructions not fulfilled would mean that their ticket is not valid okay, and that they cannot be on this flight and this is usually the time when they begin to negotiate. Okay. This is the time when they will and this is typical I mean if you go to any airline counters at the airport and if something is gone off or if you are late by 5 minutes or you know 
something or the other invariably at the airport there would be some conversation that a passenger or an upset passenger would be having with the uh, staff, the airline staff discussing this, negotiating this etcetera, etcetera. So we say it up front, look any of these things not valid, any of these instructions not followed would make an invalid ticket. So we will put you on another flight, not a problem when you get a valid ticket, but you cannot be on this flight. And the reason for that is simple, um, the example I give is, um, I cannot allow someone who does not have a parachute, a proper well packed parachute to jump off a flight, okay. There would be disruptions or there would be some kind of a uncertainty about the success. So you do not want to unnecessarily get into that. Uh, so they are more than welcome to get a valid ticket and come for the next flight, but this flight they cannot be on. And then I give this example of for how in a parachute jumping for example, uh, 15 minutes is the actual time spent on the jump, but you actually spend about 8 hours of getting trained how to pack your own parachute. So if you have not followed instructions, any instructions to pack your parachute properly, when you take the jump. And if your parachute is not packed properly, you will be in free fall blaming somebody, but even that does not matter because now you are in free fall, okay. So that is the example I usually use for the uh, implications of an invalid ticket. So our job is to make sure that everybody is safe and that they have a valid ticket and these, this is just a checklist uh, in looking to see you know whether these are the things that are bare minimum that are required for you to be able to make a good presentation. So this particular video really is emphasizing two points. One is that it is an exercise in following instructions and once you have done enough practice, maybe these instructions become redundant, okay. It is not for the pros, it is not for people who have been in the business for many, many years. Uh, however, at any point in time when I am going and listening to somebody's presentation, I always find out a few things that they have done that I can learn from and I always include it in my practice of you know future presentations. So I even encourage you to prepare a checklist for your own preparation and keep adding to it as you go along. One last thing before I finish, I would said I would share about the context for this, these particular presentations. If you formed a group of about five or six of colleagues or five or six students and every week one student or one colleague reviewed one paper, two hours they spent on it and they made a preparation of five slides and then they came and presented it to the group in five minutes. In one hour you would be able to share six papers. So when you are preparing this, the place where I stand is that it is inside of service the work that you did for two hours would actually provide service to the five colleagues or four colleagues that you would work with or if you are presenting to a larger audience of 200, 300 people then in five minutes you will be able to share and illuminate on some of the things that you have been working on your research interests and one good research paper that can be shared with these 300 people in five minutes. So you put in two hours to be able to serve these 300 people in five minutes and I think that is great place to stand as a context for this kind of work. Okay, with that I want to say thank you and uh, best wishes.